What's up, everybody? Welcome to the King's Speech Podcast, episode number 66, the podcast you can relate to, learn from, and laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television right now. It's Trevor, it's Josh, just reminding everybody the grass ain't greener. That's a fact. Oh, everybody had a fantastic Valentine's Day this weekend. I hope so. Um, I hope so. How was your Valentine's Day? How was yours? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll go first. Yeah. Yeah. Kick us off, man. <laughs> Tell me uh, about your Valentine. My V-Day was good. Uh, Ooh, some some V-day. low moves that were made uh, with the lady and I. So it was a great time. Great dinner. Great quality time spent together. Um, it was a really, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Nice, a lot of man. needed time away from like work and, you know, yeah. grinding and, and shit like that. Good time to reconnect. It's great. I like that. I like that. Indeed. Got some good photos so off. Swinkies. Which is always important. Indeed. How was, uh, how was yours? How'd you guys uh, enjoy it in sunny, sunny Fort Lauderdale? Um, well, this was actually Kim and I's first Valentine's together. Um, because really? generally, yeah, uh, generally every year I'm working all star weekend, mm-hmm. um, with my other, like my other job. So I'm always away. Okay. So this year was like our first time, like since we've been dating and I was actually like face to face with her on Valentine's day, which was really cool. Uh, we just did, um, some indoorsy stuff on, <laughs> on Saturday and Sunday, That's dope. um, cooking. Um, I made a meal, steak and eggs and brunch for her, uh, on Sunday. And she Mm -hmm. did a fantastic seafood broil, uh, last night for myself and her mother, which was great. So nice. Yeah. Mother-in-law is also in town. So mother-in-law is awesome. My Valentine's shout out to two flowers. Okay. (laughs) Uh, no. Oh, also realize that the card prices go up every year. They do. Inflation to, is, is a real like te- thing when it comes like to green stocks. cards. Yeah, it's yeah. Like stocks. <laughs> Invest in Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Um, you're literally buying physical shares every time you purchase a card. Indeed. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, good Valentine's Day overall. Some water. That's great. Did you... Um, so I know Valentine's Day is a thing, and we probably should have talked about this last week leading up to Valentine's we, Day. We definitely dropped the ball, and I realized yeah, we, we dropped, dropped the, ball. the ball because yeah. a lot of fellas dropped the ball, which is why I'm here to talk about it today. So I want to take responsibility because I feel like y'all be listening. Yeah. And, um, you know, we could have definitely put you on to some game. If we would some of y'all for them, yeah. That, that definitely could have helped a lot of weekends that didn't go the way that it was supposed to go probably right right Right. a lot of niggas woke up today like yo why is my girl tight (laughs) (laughs) buddy (laughs) we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about it talk about it i want to talk about it though from i mean what we'll we'll get into it we'll get into a little bit later we'll get into a little bit later yes cool because you know i'm always gonna gonna side with the kings of course i'm Um, side with the kings i side with the kings but we got to hold each other accountable as well that's, that's that's the only. Have, that's why I'm here. That's the only way we grow. You, let's get into it right now because that's that's actually my topic. Okay, got um, it. Because I was just moved by Valentine's Day this weekend. Oh, you were moved. And whatever. <laughs> 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 trying to gas it for effect, uh-huh. but essentially the questions that I had today was, who dictates how Valentine's Day goes in a relationship? Is that's it the question. male or is it the female? Come again. That's a real question. That's a real question. What do you mean dictate? From, like, I guess. So, like, if Valentine's Day is a big deal or a little deal, who makes that decision, the man or the female? Uh, I think it's up to, and this is another thing we're holding our kings accountable. I think it's up to our, our kings to figure out, hey, like, is this something she really, really takes seriously and is right. really important to her? And then, you know, women love us taking the lead on certain shit. So then right. just saying, hey, like, this is what we're going to do and executing, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. Right. I feel like, because I feel like a lot of dudes and accountability here, I'm, I'm, I'm not a professional, but whatever. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys die on the hill like, yo, Valentine's Day is a made up holiday and I'm not going to give into that. Right. Yeah. But ultimately what I've seen that that does not get you anywhere. 
What it gets you is your girl <laughs> tight, my man. That is and that talking is shit about you in the group you. chat. Yeah, the group chat's on fire. Group chat's on fire if you're a man. Right? It's so a like, holiday. Fuck it. It's Valentine's Day every day. All, meanwhile, y'all, it's, 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 a sad, it's a sad scene out there in the streets. But basically, I came here to say that I feel like Valentine's Day is, should be discussed between partners and where they feel it is. But if your girl seems to love this holiday more than most, St. Patrick's Day, Independence <laughs> Day, Thanksgiving even, then just appease her fam. It's one day. What does it cost you? I understand Cause, that. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm just tired of hearing it. You know what I mean? Who wants to hear the yeah? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. So Nobody. Niggas, niggas do what you have to do on the 14th of February. And this year was easy because there was no All-Star weekend. Oh, yeah, that's very true also. Come I've been on. distracted many a Valentine Day by a dunk contest or, you know, a, Hands a thriller. And a thriller in the fourth quarter. Um been very yeah, distracted. Yeah, back to back. Team yeah. Ron. Yeah, I know. I know. Back to back threes. AI going ham. Kobe going ham. LeBron getting crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of distractions this year. Easy, right? Easy. Uh, I feel like for guys, you know, paying attention is important. Listen, and I'm not speaking from a, a, a position of privilege of being perfect because every king has. A I same. am not perfect. <laughs> yeah. I might be speaking from, 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 from. I might be speaking from past failures. Last year, I didn't even get yeah. a card. I didn't even get, to get a card. Yeesh. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> All right, confession. Hey, last year I didn't get a card. But what did I do? Bounce back. I booked the cruise. Okay. You got to bounce. Go. Hey. You got to do right. <laughs> big big drop right there. Of course, trips me. work. Don't make my mistakes. Don't yeah trips. We, we told that we tell week. them keep that in yeah. the fucking duck. Yeah. But they don't listen. They don't fucking listen. They don't listen. No, no, no. Made up, no, no. It's a made-up holiday. It's a made-up holiday. Who can't? Everything's made up. Everything. Everything is, like, literally everything is made up. Single day mile. <laughs> made up, fam. It's Think May 5th. On. It's just May 5th. That's all it is. That's it. It's just but May yeah, 5th. Tell us. Tell us. Usher us in, man. You're not speaking from a point of perfection, but... It's, it's, I'm not speaking from a point of perfection, but you got to pay attention. Like, it's, it's important. Room. You know, I, I think you have it written down on our outline, like, effort. Effort counts. Effort is important. Effort to a certain counts. Extent, you know? And But ladies, you got to appreciate the effort. Just like we have to know our queens, you guys have to know your kings as well. And you need to know, hey, this thing went hard. Got to appreciate it, right? He didn't Shorty. just show up with a heart-shaped pizza and, some, and a six-pack of Coronas. This thing went hard. And well, listen, and if and for some niggas, a heart shaped pizza and a box of Coronas right. is going hard. Okay, okay. ladies, so there's know levels. your mans. Yeah, know your mans. Absolutely. Man. Yeah. So like, don't expect. See, that's the thing. Don't expect boom, boom, boom. If your man never gave you boom, come on now, <laughs> right? Because then on Monday you tight like yo, my man didn't give me boom, boom, boom. It's like yo, your man never, ever, never ever gave, gave you once. any. No booms. No booms. No booms. So, and then that nigga gets no booms. And then he gets no boobs. It's a sad, sad circle. It's a bad circle. It's a, it's a bad circle. circle. I'm trying to tell you, I'm talking from experience. Don't be in that circle, <laughs> kid. Okay. I think that's what's important. Look out for the kids. Some, I feel like this, that's what's important is that we we talk from experiences of times where we like knocked it out the park and right. times where we struck out. Right. You know, like it, it happens. And yo, um, you just learn from it as you go forward. You learn. I, yo, I can honestly say that this year, I think I took my most simplest approach to valentine's day in I, my I, head right? I saw, no it was it was still a lot of effort though you know what i'm saying but like and, and like this is like a prime example kim was like geek because what we did was we spent quality time together right mm -hmm. like and she and she appreciated that not geek i don't want to make her sound like she was stupid hype over quality time but she appreciated the quality time and the efforts made of course and, she was saying, hyped like, over your quality time king that's yeah, your time you know king you know yeah you know i mean <laughs> You know, that good quick, <laughs> quick three to four, three to four, nothing crazy. But uh, yeah, so, you know, just effort, man. Like, dudes got to make effort. We got to stop dying on hills that don't make any sense to die on. Like, who we die on the Valentine's Day hill for? Who started Our boys? That, what niggas started dying on hills that don't make any sense? Fam, your man's who you telling us you ain't doing anything for Valentine's Day? He also is getting no box. You both of y'all getting no box. So... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I think as, as guys, we just need to normalize doing nice shit. Yo, that's I it. And, you, and it. And it not normalize being it. like 
taking an L. Like us doing nice shit doesn't yeah. mean to take an L. You that's know? it right there. That's it right there. Normalize. Like, I texted like five of my boys who are mm-hmm. all like in relationships. And I'm like, yo, and I'm very exposed to you. Yo, what you got planned? What you got planned? What you got planned? We all wrapped through it. What we doing? Like, I don't even yeah. understand what's so complicated. Like, but you know what it's like? Niggas is also in like real relationships. So like, we really are speaking from experience. Like, we're like, like, I have no choice. <laughs> what no, you think? I, no, I feel you. <laughs> just no skip choice thing. Valentine's? But for, I know, I know for me, I'm very like, I'm very like bogged down sometimes in like regular life and like, you know, the, the, the realness of life, right? Like the realness of, you know, money and work and bills and right, and right, life right, and, right. And natural. A lot of times, like I get so involved in all of that. That's where all my time and energy and attention goes that maybe some of the like extra shit doesn't get the attention that it needs. And I feel like that's right. some guys. A lot of times, because like we are men and we do want to provide and, you know, we do want to make sure like the house is taken care of. We're taking care of ourselves because if we're not taking care of ourselves, who can we really take care of? Um, so I feel like sometimes that distracts away from doing probably some of the romantic shit or the nice shit when we think romantic right. shit and nice shit is just like working as hard as we can every single day. But it's extra stuff. It's a balance. There's extra, there's, extra, there's extra levels to just working as hard as you can, you know? Yeah. And unfortunately, like as guys, when we were we were born with this testosterone in this sack, so that's our job. That is our job. But yeah. if we I feel like I'm 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 from this standpoint, if we agree to be in a if we agree to be in a relationship, mm-hmm. then you don't have to agree to like do the extra work that that entails with being in a relationship. So like on top of providing yeah. and surviving we also like did sign up for this we did say mm-hmm. y'all want i want shorty around yes we got we, should, you know what i mean so like we got to do things like we got to keep that on our mind i feel like i'm like and i'm speaking to myself in this like challenging myself to like i am get caught up in work like especially because like a lot of my work comes in travel so sometimes i'll be like okay Yo, I, I gotta go for like two three weeks mm-hmm. getting caught up in the bag but like that's not going to help my relationship you feel me or like that that might hurt the relationship so like it's it, you got to just find the balance, but listen from the OGs, man. We talk from experience. Indeed, a lot of experience uh, from doing amazing things and then doing like ridiculously like just burgering, just botching bold, things, like fucked up things, you know. And yeah. and I think the sad thing is that we hear a lot of the whole like, don't do this for your woman, don't do that for your woman from like older from older niggas that either thought and we were talking about this before we started recording that like being in a relationship is pressure it's pressure on both sides most of the pressure is on this side i dare anybody to to debate that on um, this side is the, uh, on the male side absolutely two thousand percent i dare anybody to debate 2000%. that but there are <laughs> we don't stop we don't stop thinking we, we can't. don't stop sleeping we can't we can't. If 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 you're a real one though, because I'm not gonna sit here and be like, because there's sometimes I sit here and I'm like, why don't I thought everybody felt like this, but they don't. So we can't no. like you and I are like minded. But another thing, it's a factor in that people don't really think like this. But continue. Some people don't exactly, uh, and some and some guys once they get into the into the position of a relationship and get pressure put on them, have this grass is greener mentality, and that's exactly when they go and find like the um, the chick that's just happy to be there. Or the chick that's gonna like stroke their ego for two or three weeks, and they start putting, they start thinking it should be that easy with the person that they're with, mm. and then they find out the grass ain't that. greener because they realize every woman is going to have these expectations of you if you have a sack and were born a man. Sit, and King, then both you situations are that. fucked up, and then you some bitter old nigga telling some young nigga at the basketball park that women ain't shit. So it's a horrible cycle. It's a horrible cycle. And that's just really, you just really just pretty much accurately depicted like life and, and just how that goes. Like it's just, it comes from bad decisions Mm -hmm. as young niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we'd be like, yo, like, oh my God, how did that happen? And be like, yo, she's wilding and then grass is greener. So now I'm going to check this, check this other, yo, the grass ain't green. Here's why. The grass is not green. Women are women. (laughs) Guess what? It's as simple as that. When you were saying that, I was like, yeah, because women are women. 
So like if I leave one woman to go to another woman, I'm going to deal with the same thing. The same, the, one the common same denominator. And, and maybe a woman. even worse. Because maybe even worse. New woman like isn't really like, I guess, they don't know your bullshit. They don't know the things that make you tick, make you happy, make you angry. Right. And oh, just and just and just for starters, you started the game down 10 because new woman is now insecure that you might do the same thing you did to your old chick to her. So now you're gonna fight that battle now, too. Wow, we're potting today. Let's go, man. I think it's Kim's cup. It says Mrs. <laughs> Kim on it. And I got to start talking like a bad bitch. <laughs> you are you are talking like a bad bitch. Yes, you are. Yeah. Indeed. But that's how it goes. Do your thing, King. Um, but yeah, like it's it's and I mean, you know, expectations, expectations. Sometimes we meet all of them, sometimes we don't. Um, it's all about how you bounce back, you know, what you do you know, after those moments to kind of reestablish how you feel about each other. Uh, and I think Valentine's Day is a good day for that. Listen, like, I'm, I think retail really fucked me up because I don't see holidays the same way I used to, like when I was a right, kid. Right, right, you only see them in colors. I see them as Maybe days, right. as regular days, right? But then I also understand that, like, somebody I might be with might not see them as a regular day. So I got to, you know, you got to bite that bullet. And ultimately, it, it's beneficial for both of you. So, you know, you just got to do what you got to do. It's beneficial. Listen, I don't know if this makes sense, but we eat food every day, right? Mm -hmm. But on Thanksgiving, we eat. We eat. also, we eat, eat. Yeah, you mix meats on Thanksgiving. Thing, you be mixing meats on Thanksgiving, too. <laughs> meats, <mix. laughs> it's not a regular day. <laughs> What's all right, listen, my second topic that I wanted to talk about. Uh -huh. First, I skipped over the fact that Justin Combs has a new show on Revolt um, that's hosted by some dude named Justin L.A. Boy. And it's like a talk show radio, like kind of like a lifestyle thing. Oh, I don't uh, know. They have celebrities on it. I think it's uh, Justin LaBoy, the, the, the toxic Justin LaBoy, Instagram yeah. nigga with the toxic Instagram yeah. quotes. Yeah. Yeah, he finally, I, I, I wasn't hip to him. I looked at him up. And then he revealed his face on the show and it's a whole thing, whatever. Mm. But I skipped over that because uh, I think last week I announced or two weeks ago, I said that uh, Insecure was on its last season. Yes. And I know the streets were like, oh my God, what are we going to do after Insecure? Well, the good news is Issa Rae got approved with the HBO Max deal for a new show called Rap Shit. It is a mm -hmm. comedy series, um, and it seems to be along the lines of the lifestyle of um, the City Girls, Young Miami and JT, who were brought on to be the executive producers. So I can only imagine what this is about. Um, I'm excited for it. More of us, and hopefully, I get casted in it. You know what I'm saying? If they need a young nigga with some dreads. I'm here. You're gonna be one of the niggas at uh, the the City Girls Whatever. scam. Sure, scam me. <laughs> is young, is young in Miami in a, yeah, whatever. Scam me. It's fine. I'm sure this is gonna be hilarious simply because like Issa Rae's behind it and she's a genius. Yeah, uh, she's good. She's good. She's good. I I'm just glad she's just getting more stuff. I just I feel for every I feel for every dad who has a daughter and their favorite rapper is the city girls. I feel for it. I don't know. I don't I don't know what I would do if I was a dad. And I'm like walking past my daughter's room and I hear City Girls blasting. Give a fuck about a nigga. Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Birkin bags, like scamming. Oh, man. What act do you up. think you is can the best approach? <laughs> I don't know what to do. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? What, what's the best approach? To handling your kids being City Girl fans? Not your kids. Your daughter. Your daughter being like, a city girl fan? Like, nah, not a city girl fan. I'm thinking about it. I'm just like, yo, like, for example, right? Because this is this this goes right in with the city girl thing, and she's just listening to ratchet influences. But mm -hmm. are you gonna put your daughter on game to everything as a as a as a dude who's been through the ringer? Are you going to because I feel like I've seen different approaches, right? I've seen some dads just <laughs> life is funny. I've seen some dads just act like oblivious to whatever their daughter's going on not too involved whatever blah yeah. blah blah life goes on then then like i see other dads who be like yo <laughs> niggas ain't shit let me tell you how 
Which dad are you? I don't know because I don't know what approach works best. Because like the one that's oblivious to stuff. I mean, girl, like I feel like parents sometimes they get into their parent head and they forget that they were kids one time also. Right, right. So right. it's like if you if you're dating a chick and your mom or your dad say, "Hey, she's no good for you." And then in your mind, you're going to be like, I mean, the way she was throwing that ass back in the club, she's great for me. Um, you're going to want to experience that and learn for yourself. So I think a little bit of like growing up is is living and learning and making mistakes. You never want to see your, your kids make mistakes, especially mistakes that could end up in them, you know, being pregnant by Fetty Wap. But you just, I don't know. Your, 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 your worst nightmare is like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my worst nightmare. I guess I mean what I'm what I mean is if, like, like my okay. daughter was like, hey, NBA young boy is outside and he wants to meet you. <laughs> Sick. Sick. But I always re- like reflect back to the Martin Lawrence and Will Smith infamous scene. Ah, and that's so that just how I'm giving it up. Did you? Yeah, see, you know how it go. You know what I mean? I mean, I just think that I I think my approach would just be like the pregame, like I like before she can go and experience the world and make the mistakes. I feel like that's where you learn life, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to be oblivious to life before she goes out in the world. Like I want to have real conversations with my daughter before she walks into this earth and gets blindsided by a fucking slick talking light skin nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come no, on, son. You. come on. Now you're right. On. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, like, I feel like there's just dads who just act like there's not light-skinned niggas out there who's ready to talk to their daughter. <laughs> and it's really, like, if you sit down and talk with a whole, couple of OGs right now, I'd be like, yo, did you ever tell your daughter about the light-skinned niggas? He'd be like, you know what? <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> and then you look, and you see them a lot of kids. I think it's important to put, to, to put your kids on a game. But, I mean, we... I didn't learn a game from my parents. You did not I think that's a generational thing, right? Because yeah, but that's were, whack, though. That's bro, whack. my parents that's were born whack. in the 50s. Yeah, it's whack. I don't want to learn. I learn from them. I'm just kidding. I love my parents. No, I love but, my parents too, and I learned a lot from them, and, and continue too. But yes, 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 this is totally different. There's DMs. There's Snapchat. There's all this other, all these other avenues where niggas are just getting a chance to be nasty, and where women are getting a chance to, I guess, getting the unfortunate end of it like they're they're on the end of like these niggas being nasty like random dick pics a few like maybe last year um a homeboy got an accidental dick pic from this nigga that we both went to college with just off the love just off the no it was a mistake he meant to send it to somebody else and then she opened it up and and saw this nigga's sausage with his his nappy pubic hairs niggas so it's like, care, take, take how are you the downstairs? Yeah, absolutely, definitely manscape. Absolutely, indeed, it's important. Um, but well, yeah, boys. like it's, this, this nasty, this nasty shit out there. So I think from our perspective, like we're we're we are like we're in between where we were before, where we experienced dating yeah. before the nasty shit and during the nasty shit, and now I don't know what nasty shit is. Um, so I think from that perspective, like our opinions like our paramount, our best, because the technology is just like lines up better than, you know, our parents or my parents are born in the fifties. Yeah. No, we're, we're, we're fortunate to be kind of like the gap um, yeah. between technology and the new age. And trust me and believe me, me and my kids, we just, just going to talk about, we just going to talk about shit though. You feel me? Like, we just going to talk about I mean, shit you have to. as is. And that's it. Like, we just going to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, Y'all niggas, like just real discussions, like just real. I'm just trying try to have real discussions with my kids. And y'all niggas do whatever you want to do. But just know I taught y'all niggas about this shit before the social. Show. Don't look at me when it goes south. <laughs> now, I mean, you know, they're going to make mistakes. And you got to be there to support them when they make mistakes. Can't write your kids off. Some people write their kids off. Um, yeah, that's trash too. You got to be there, man. Yeah. Like, gotta what be a there. journey. Let's go for parenting. Let's go Got to be present. Yeah, let's go to parenting. Um... um Hold on one second. Let me get some chapstick. All right, y'all. So next up, uh, staying on that Valentine's Day vibe, Cardi B has a very interesting perspective when it comes to gift giving on Valentine's Day. Cardi believes- Talk about it. Cardi says, yes, men do deserve to get gifts, 
as well for Valentine's Day, but the gift have to be less expensive than the girl's gift. She wrote, so if you so if he buys you flowers, you buy him grass. Let that sit for a little while. <laughs> if you buy if he buys you flowers, buy him grass. Kings. Now I'm always gonna be I got on the side of the kings, right? Because like you want to go all out like a good king wants to go all out for his queen, make sure she's happy, make sure she feels good, make sure she feels the love on Valentine's Day. But how am I supposed to feel the love when you go out to the front lawn, pick up a piece of grass and put it in my hand and say, happy Valentine's Day. I love you. How am I supposed to feel about that? Yo. No one's going to say it. It's not the popular opinion. But being a man, we really be eating a lot of shit, bro. (laughs) It's a lot, right? It's Because they're running with this. They're running with this. No, of course they're running with it because Cardi B, the the, the queen of the Bronx, has made it it so. Like, this is her statement about about Valentine's Day. Uh, I mean, we listen, like, we just discussed the pressures and the the stuff that you got to deal with as a man and go through. And we're fine with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've embraced it, uh, you know, both of us as individuals. But uh, this makes it a little hard. This makes it a little tough. And it's weird because, like, she's speak, be speaking from a perspective of where, you know, if uh, if Offset buys her a Bentley, then she buys her version of grass, of getting Offset grass, is getting Offset a Beamer. A beamer. Still winning. <laughs> Still a win in, in their... Uh, and they're, you know, financial tier. But right, right. It, but the, the comparison I just don't like. Like, why do I need to get why do I need to get grass, Cardi? Why are we not? Why isn't it a love an equal? Where is the equality? <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Why, why is equality? See, this is the nonsense. Why is equality a temper? Excuse me. Why is equality like a temperamental thing. Why can't equality like if it's if you equality we begging for it, begging, right? So on Valentine's Day, if I buy you flowers, fam, come home with flowers. Equality. I mean, I know no. I know you believe it's supposed to be a real thing, but I think you know no. it's never gonna happen. I know. I just wanted to get it off because I can't get it off of my house. So <laughs> No one cares. <laughs> no one cares about our plate. You know that. Who? Who? I always, um, and this is just like, I don't know, this this reminds me of our first episode together. We're just saying like bitching and moaning. But that's cool. That's fine. That's okay too. Uh, I always like think about this this video on YouTube that I watch every once in a while. Just like remind me of like how things are and how like you just have to accept it and like just deal with the shit. Uh, it's this video of um, Ebro in the morning, and he's basically saying it was like as a guy, like it's hard being a guy because you can't have off days. You got to have money in your pocket at all times. If you ain't got no money in your pocket, ain't nobody checking for you. Don't nobody want to don't nobody care how you're doing, how you feeling or anything like that. Um, and if you go through certain shit, like let's say you lose your job, you have like mental health, mental health issues. There's always an, an expiration date on the support a man is supposed to receive because let's yep. say he's out of work for three months or four months or five months at six months. It has to be like, yo, nigga, get your shit together. But for a woman, if a woman loses a job, let's say she's out of work for six months to a year, you're going to look at her king and be like, hey, why aren't you? Why aren't you supporting her king? Why aren't you there for her king? As a man should be. It's not fair. As a man should be, I'm not saying a man should not be there for his queen, but the double standard should. is a little, little, little crazy. So I always watch. I just like remind myself to like what it really is and what you be watching that. I, I do, and we. I'm gonna send you the video when we're done. That shit is that. That shit will have you in your bag. Like, yeah, I just gotta accept this shit. This is just what it is. Because there's actually women in this arsenal. That shit will throw me in my bag. <laughs> that shit will throw you in your bag, my nigga. For real, oh, no. for real. I know you. You will get in your bag. I. 
Just take like yeah. watch this, not at home. Don't watch this when you're in the house. Yeah, no, what yeah, Trevor, why why are you sending me these? You didn't even send me <laughs> TT yet. <laughs> TT A B. <laughs> yeah, ne- don't watch either of those in the crib. Neither of those in the crib. Uh but yeah, no, it's 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 just important an important thing to realize as a as a guy. And Cardi's just making it just so easy, so easy for us to make that argument. Shout out to all the dudes worldwide, man. All the kings. Feel your pain. King. All the good kings. None of those bitch ass niggas. Just the good kings. No, just the good kings. That's just just the good kings. Small circle, you know what I mean? Kings, kings among kings. King speech. Indeed. Wow. King speech. Hey, hey, hey. Indeed. Um, so next up, I thought was a really great story and something that I'll be definitely tuned into. Um, Netflix just released the first trailer for the Notorious B.I.G. documentary. Now, this is the first documentary on Biggie that has been approved by his estate. His estate includes his mom, his family, um, his mom, Valletta Wallace, and Diddy, our executive producers. I watched the trailer earlier. It features a lot of like home videos of Biggie before he was famous. Um, that like deep discussions with his mom, deep discussions with his friends, with little C's. And it looks like something we haven't seen before on Biggie. Like we remember the movie, um, you know, Notorious, the like the the flash and the pomp and circumstance behind that. But this seems like really real and gritty, and I can't wait to watch it. Need it, gotta have it, must have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, can't wait. When's it set to come out? Uh, comes out March first, so soon. Oh, beautiful. so we can we can get a little breakdown. Christopher Wallace, indeed, little breakdown on Ooh. the. Uh, the Biggie documentary here on the King's Beach podcast, uh, you know, as soon as That's it airs. Indeed. Um, uh, one of the quotes um, from the Rolling Stone article. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Uh, much of I Got a Story to Tell's early video footage comes from the archives of and interviews with the rapper's childhood friend, Damien D. Rock Butler. Uh, Big was always a visionary. There will never be such a great time in Brooklyn as the 80s and 90s. Out of great struggle comes great art and music. The Brooklyn kid rapping today won't have the same stories we have to tell. D-Rock said in a statement to Rolling Stone, adding that with the documentary, fans see Big was an artist before he was a rapper. I think that's big. I, and in, in the trailer, they, they note that Biggie used to spend summers in Jamaica uh, when he was a kid. And a lot of his musical influence came from there um a lot of his musical influence came from jazz like they had one of his um i think junior high school teachers on there that was a jazz instructor and had a great relationship with big and was grooming him to become a jazz musician before even a rapper so i think little information about that and understanding that big was not just yeah not just some guy out there like you know saying random shit like he really loved his art and really loved music and um, I think I like the quote that says the Brooklyn kid rapping today won't have the same stories that we have to tell. Because all the Brooklyn kids rapping today, they just make up words. Zaza, pow, pow, bow. I don't know what it means. I don't speak that language. <laughs> I don't. Trevor, you are the old man now. What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> is that supposed to be the gun <laughs> that goes off? I don't know. I don't know. Zaza. Zaza. <laughs> <laughs> come, come pass me to Zaza in a Mazda. Trev. <laughs> bow, bow, I you bow. I know, I know you can't <laughs> wait for, for your restoration of Brooklyn documentary on Netflix. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of uh, Netflix, did you did you finish Malcolm and Marie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Talk about it. Ah, oh, man, it's ah, oh, boy. So she's just mad this entire time because she wasn't in the movie. Yes. So why are we talking about not... all the other bullshit? Right. Right? 
This is so layered. It's layered. It's layered. It's layered. It's layered. Okay, so let's break it down. Whose team are you on? Team Malcolm or Team Marie? I'll oh, Team Malcolm. You really side with all the kings. Got to. We need all the support we can get. He's wrong, though. He is wrong. Yeah, so why are you on his side, Trevor? Because it's just the way <laughs> that the conversation went. Okay. Just the way all, it went. All, yes. Okay. Let's let's just pause right here. Woman, you got an issue? Please use your beautiful mouth that we fell in love with and open it up and tell us your issue. Because that was Marie's problem. Nigga, you shouldn't even let this movie go into production without telling me that you're tight. Don't wait until the day it comes out on my release day to just sabotage it with all the other BS and then hit me with the Oh, by I should have been in the movie. No, I should have been in the movie. The only thing I'm mad about is, didn't she audition for the movie? Unclear. Did, did, in Unclear. the movie, didn't because at because when she takes fuck this movie has been out for weeks. When she goes with the knife and she does like that little scene in front of him to yeah. show him how good how she could have in that yeah. role, then he was like, "Damn, she done that in the audition." Ooh. Ooh. All the girls are so hyped. All the girls are so yeah, hyped. Like, the yeah. It's like, oh, you yeah. showed him, sis. You told him, sis. No, she did not. There's a time. So I was like, do that in the audition. Come here. If that's the opportunity you want, if you want to do that fly shit as just, and that's the thing that like when it comes to those discussions, when women just bring out all the bells and whistles and the tools and this bitch actually brought out dialogue and a knife, you're doing too much. I mean, he did a lot also. They both were like performing on stage that entire um, yeah, that entire yeah. argument. He did a lot also. He said a lot of wild shit. They both said a lot he of wild lot. shit. He he wild. She did too. See, no, 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 no. Uh no, 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 no. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a, for our because this is I thought about this a lot. He wild when he was talking about old bitches. Yeah, that was that was that. that was that crossed you the line. You should never do that. That's you crossed the line. She when the only time she mentioned other niggas was when she was lying or, or she was actually like quoting the, those quotes but I do actually think she did cheat before mm-hmm. yeah she did which which is just this is just too toxic Malcolm Marie too toxic for me I I, I cannot it was a lot <laughs> no it was a lot two parts I don't know how you could come back from that argument though like as a couple like after going back and forth <laughs> that's I don't know tough. what's that's after that tough, man. What's after him, like looking at you, looking at you at the tub and telling you how all the old bitches were better than you? Yo, that was OD. The, the movie should have ended right there because I was like, I felt, I was like, a nigga. Yeah. Like, what's Tough. after her saying like all the wild shit she said about like your movie and the star of your movie <laughs> and and all that shit like that? And he should have thanked her. He should have thanked her. Yeah, I, I'll I'm give not. You that. So far, so far, so far. I thought she played within, if there was an inbound, I thought she played, she was playing way closer to the lines than he was. He was far left, bro. He was. Like, he 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 crossed real life lines. Yeah. Like, he the walked. nigga went on for multiple women. I was like, yo, king, king, yeah, king, king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's usually what women do, though. Women will usually bring up your old bitches. Niggas don't usually bring yeah. up their old women to to, to yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let her list them off. Exactly. So you can just and look at her confused. Like, look at her confused, huh? Where? I don't even know her. When? I haven't talked to her in years. To her. <laughs> I haven't talked to her in years. Um, but not. You're right. The, the toxicity. It was. It was like. It was. It was bad. Like you need a hazmat suit to go back in that house after that. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I. I mean, I did it was, enjoy it, it cool. and I think. I think it was a, a good display of how it could look, how it could look, and the insecurities that women run around with, especially when guys aren't. I guess like building up their woman or like building up their queen. Right. And if you talk about old chicks, you're not really building up your woman. You're just comparing her. And nobody and nobody likes that. Right. Because then, she said the real thing right there. Yeah. Go ahead. But then like from her perspective, like they get in the crib and uh 
she makes them some lazy stovetop mac and cheese. So that's no, at the no, tone. No, that's, that's that, at the that, tone. That, that, no, that's no, at the that's tone their for thing. the that's entire their thing, movie and the attitude. That, that can't be your thing. No. That cannot be your mac that's and cheese standard. That's, <laughs> that can't be your mac and cheese standard. That's not mine. What is your mac and cheese standard? What at is least, the action? What is, let me hear because because I, I, I'm going go record. What uh-huh. I need to know what is the appropriate way to make mac and cheese? Tell I think me. Right everybody now. has different ways. So if you're gonna do it on the stove, right? You at least need like some milk. You need some real cheese, like some real cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese. At least, at least three cheeses you need for your mac and cheese. You okay. need that. Some people like flour. Some people don't. I don't like flour. Uh, you need some okay. real macaroni. You put them in the pot. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. When you say real macaroni, what is fake macaroni? That's that Velveeta shit. That's that craft shit. Like that that cheese in the packet. That's that's what she did. She put the cheese in the packet. You gotta add some butter. Add some no, butter. Velveeta oh. is gross. I will never. A little stand salt, on it. and then you're good. But that was some lazy mac and cheese. You set the tone for your entire evening when your mac and cheese is that half assed. But that's their thing. Don't take away from that. Half-ass mac and cheese is their thing. The, the, the whole relationship is fucked that. up then. <laughs> yeah, that's... Well, blame him. <laughs> that was rough. That was rough. It was rough to watch. It was triggering. Like I told you last week. It was last triggering. Week, it was very triggering. triggering. Yeah, extremely. Yeah. But, like, that's the thing. I don't know how... I'm thinking... Like, of course, like, no relationship is perfect. And I feel like in, in mine, like, we've done a great job of not going below the belt. Because I think we're both very right. capable. Like, I think everybody's who's gone below the belt with somebody before is very capable of doing it again, of saying wild right. shit. But then I I could not, I could not come back from that. What do you, what's the next day like after you say all that shit? <sighs> Just like business as usual? I got for you. Nah, man. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what that wake up is like. I don't know. I know I know from the male from the male perspective, if we have a night like that, next day is spent. Baby, I love you so much. I don't, I don't know yeah. if it's if it's if I don't know if it's that for me. It's probably just like take some time, go to the gym, go for a run, go for a walk. Like just just well, like I mean if I said it, if I said if I said some hurtful things without her saying hurtful things, then I know the next yeah. day is like recouping. But like if I heard hurtful things, my nigga. <laughs> oh man. No, it's just, it's just, I'm it's working just, on. Yeah. It's just tough. It's just tough. It's tough. It's tough for us. But I mean, I, listen, I I I know that Malcolm fucked up. I know that he said a lot of fucked up things, but if if her whole thing was I'm not in this movie, that's why I'm pissed off. And he's a filmmaker, and this is his business. This is his job. You gotta get over that shit. Layered. You gotta get over. Layered, it. Be, layered, layered. Only because it's her story. Layered. But she's not an actress, Tra- right? Didn't she in the movie? Yes. They say like she, she gave up act, acting, and she wanted to focus on being sober and and all this stuff like that. So why do you, as a guy, if I'm thinking like this is what my woman wants to do, why throw her back into the deep end of that shit that could fuck her life up again, fuck our life up again? She said she wanted the role though. And she, she auditioned, together for but her. she auditioned good enough. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. But this is this is an extreme example. But let's say you're the coach, you're the coach of the Jets, and your wife likes to kick field goals. And your wife is like, "Hey, I saw you cut your kicker the other day. Let me try out for your team." You you let your wife kick in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. No. Even if she's a great kicker, she's a great kicker. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And this episode may come off as a little misogynistic, but we're not. We're not. Anyway, sports. Sports, sports, sports. Sports, sports. I got, I have a gripe. What's your gripe? We got the softest dude in the world. Uh, Anthony Davis? Softy. What makes him soft? He's not soft. The thing is, he's fragile. He's a fragile being. He's a very fragile person. He's always been a fragile person. He has been throughout his career. Yeah, I know. 
So it's just unfortunate, but the, the man is the man is hurt every other play. When he falls down, it's so theatrical. And I think it's it just looks that way probably because he's so big and so long. So pause. Big and long. But um he falls like he's five nine. Yeah, he does fall like he's five nine. He grabs he his does. ankle, he's five nine. He's not grab his ankle like he's seven foot. Seven foot, you, you just sit there. Ah. But he has a legit injury. I would say his his injury right now well, is legit. Achilles, he yeah. needs to he, he to needs to miss that. time. Um, but his play this season, I don't know if it's tied to the injury, has looked kind of soft though. Because like he lets, um, I was watching the game where they played the Grizzlies, and he had Jonas Valanciunas looking like he was fucking Kareem Abdul Jabbar in the first quarter, just like getting buckets just everywhere around. around the basket, like it was nothing. They end up winning the game, but it's but it's like, dog. What's going on? I don't know, man. I don't know. You still think the Lakers repeat? Not if he, not if he does this little ah, thing all the time. Can't win games. When, ah. I'm gonna stick by my Brooklyn prediction, even though it's you know shown itself to have a few holes in that boat. They I'm, I'm gonna stick by it. Games together, they played nine games. I'm not even tripping about Brooklyn. Niggas is. I I was only curious to see one thing, and that was can they be on the court at the same time together? And they can. But that being said, them niggas can accomplish anything in this world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just needed to see if when it came to hoops, can they coexist? And it proves that they can coexist in hoops. It's just business as usual for niggas. It's about fixing the chemistry and this and that. That's all regular basketball standard politics. That'll happen with time. We know that. Mm -hmm. So my thing is like, dude, this is crazy. This yeah. is going to be crazy. Brooklyn's going to be crazy. Yeah. And they just, I mean, I don't think they're going to get to a place where they play good defense, but who can guard them? Like James Harden is going out there against 16 assists a game. Kyrie scoring yeah. at will. KD scoring at will. Joe Harris Stay opening the corner, hitting every open three. Swap. Jeff Green found a new strand of life. Jeff Green put, is killing. Right hooping, now. hooping, hooping. Yeah, they need another piece. Not like a, not like a, not a big piece. Not a big piece by any means. Uh, just a nice quality piece. Pause. Um, pause. Pause. But a nice quality. Piece. I think one more. Huh? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Um, yeah, Andre think, Drummond is available. Yeah. Andre Drummond is on the trade uh, trade market, but the Nets don't have anything uh, to trade. You're okay with the, you're okay with DeAndre. You just need another piece. I think with Drummond, they are like for for sure champions with Andre Drummond on that on that team. The way he can rebound, can the way he can, can defend, can the way he can score. Him? Probably not. They gave away everything. They don't have any draft picks. They don't. That's what I'm that, saying. The salary cap is. Capped. Um, That's a good piece. Oh, so, they had Shumpert. How's Shumpert playing for them? They don't have Shumpert anymore. He that was last year. They had him last year. And no, Connor. they signed him this year. They signed. No, they don't have Iman Shumpert on their yes, roster. They did. Uh, Iman Shumpert is somewhere changing diapers for uh, bro. I Queens, promise Donna you. Taylor. I promise you. Let's check that right now. Um, well, I think, at I mean, least they did sign him. No, they he was with them uh, last year in the bubble. I don't think he's with them right now. No, I'm t no, this season because I remember. I'm gonna tell you, they just signed him. They extended. They're like, yeah, Iman gave a little stint. Iman Shum. Yeah, this last nice. time he played for them was in 2020. The 2019 2020 season, he played 13 games for them. No, I yes, I agree with that, but they were also like. I'm saying he's uh, from clutch points. Well, I don't they were trying to sign him this season after James Harden. Ooh, I don't think Shump helps them at all, though. He's good at yeah. perimeter defense, but he's such a streaky shooter. He's like liability on offense a lot of times. Um, Ooh, Shump. I'm cool with Shump on them. I, I want Shump to get a little an another chance, too. Eh, eh, eh. That's okay. He raps. He be all right. Um, he doesn't rap as good as Dame Lillard, but he raps. He'll be all right. I don't, I don't like his rap. <laughs> um, anything like else rap. for sports? Sports. Uh, sports. Lamelo finding his groove. Oh, he's killing. He's a rookie of the year. Finding his groove. 
And I and I also yeah. have um this thing. Anthony um, Edwards is all right though. Anthony, I told you that's my um at the beginning of the season, I thought he was gonna be rookie of the year. So we'll see how it works out for him. But Lamella was killing. Also, I need to talk about Zion. You like him? He cannot be guarded. Uh I gotta watch. I gotta watch more. You gotta see some games. The other last game I saw him play, he was 13 for 14 from the field with 36 points. 13 yeah, for 14. But yeah, I gotta I gotta see. I gotta see. I gotta see how it works and how it looks. And the thing is, like, he knows his game. Like, he knows his game is not spot up three. He knows his game, even sometimes is in mid-range, is getting into the paint, using those shoulders, getting space, and getting buckets and getting rebounds. Like, I I it's effective, I love, huh? I just love watching him play basketball because he just knows what he's good at and sticks to that. Like, there's so many players that try to be three-point shooters that ain't three-point shooters, that think they're three-point shooters because they watch Steph Curry hit, hit threes. I'm a three-point shooter. <laughs> I'm a fucking shooter. I can shoot that thing. Case in point. <laughs> Yo, can I tell you a quick story? Yeah, of course. So this morning I woke up and I didn't want to work out. Didn't feel like it was, wasn't in the mood. I'm like, nah, man, thug it out. So I did my yoga. Uh huh. Then I did my video. Half assed it a little bit, but. Or 75%. That, you know what I mean? I didn't do 100%. There's like a 75%. But I still mm-hmm. got it done. And then I'm like, you know what? Let me just get, like, I've been doing this like nine, nine, nine. So suicides, nine, back and forth. Yeah. And I do nine sets of those. So that's my little thing, right? But my, that's been my cardio. So I'm like, yo, let me just go get these nines in, whatever. Take my dog out. Wrap my dog up. Doing my set. First set. Okay? Fourth mm-hmm. down and back. I misjudged the step. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. I mm. thought I was at the the end where I hit tag and go to the other way. I wasn't. Yeah, I planted and just rolled my ankle. My shit mm. is cooked right now. And getting old is trash. It's just trash. Can't even run. Who am I? Got to ice it. Got to got got to take care of that thing. Um, been icing. Getting periodically on this episode. Getting older is. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I have both perspectives. Like, this shoulder is just not functional, <laughs> like, right, or right. anything. Oh, the yeah. shoulder pain is the worst. Yeah, this shoulder. Can is you just lift? Not. I can't. Can you bench. lift your? Can you? No. Can you lift your arm up? Yeah, I can lift it up. Okay, but Good. I just can't extend back. Okay. I can't extend all the way back. Uh, but yeah, like certain things, once it's out of commission, it's out of commission. Yeah. Like it's, it's just a wrap for that. Like I know hoops for me is probably a thing that hoops. like full contact. Like bumping, jumping, hyperextend and shit like that. Like I know that's the thing that like I can't do one hundred percent. Like I know Oops. that. Oops, I miss it. You know, so I know I can lift. I know I can run. I know I can do all the other stuff. Um, but like getting older is realizing, hey, like I, like certain things you just aren't capable of doing anymore. As I was gonna ride the bike stay, today. Stay in shape and stay healthy. That's all you can do. You know what I'm saying? Like that's all the other, do. you know, ain't nobody running around here, LeBron. Nobody's LeBron's except for LeBron. LeBron is nuts. That's up. Like the way he's been playing. He's uh and he's about to turn it up a notch. About to kick it up a notch with uh with AD nursing that Achilles injury. Yeah. Now we can talk MVP. No debates. As far as, far as who the MVP is right now in the NBA. No, I'm saying like if if Ron does what he what he's about to do, what we think he's mm-hmm. about to do, and that's make the make the Lakers still a main top tier contender by the playoffs without AD, then we can talk MVP talk. They're not giving LeBron another MVP. If he does what he if he does this if he does this doesn't matter. He could lead the league in scoring, assists, rebounds, steals. Who are they gonna give it to? Uh, Joel Embiid. Whatever, man. Whatever. He deserves it. A big man hasn't won an MVP in over a decade. He deserves it. Yeah, okay, cool. No, who's no has been more than that. I think Lashak was a lax center to win a bit to win a to win an MVP. Young Shaquille? Yeah. But then LeBron is never gonna he deserved, he should have got it last year. He should have. We know he got snubbed. That's what I'm saying. He should, yeah. they might even give him the fluke one this year. No, I think they're over. I think the press is over giving LeBron MVPs. 
Because think of all the season he could have won it. The season uh, when he was in Cleveland and after Kyrie left, he could have won MVP. Last year, he could have won MVP. There's a lot of good players out there, too. You know what I mean? Every single like, there's a year. Lot of, like, there's a lot of good players. Every single year he was in Miami, he could have been MVP and defensive player of the year. But they didn't give him that shit. You know? The hate. Yeah, it is. It's a little bit of hate. It's a little bit of hate. It's a little bit of fatigue, a little LeBron fatigue. Um, I'll tell you what type of fatigue I have right now, and you're going to laugh at this. I'm tired of wearing these fucking masks, my nigga. I'm tired. Yo! Tired. Okay, cool, cool, Tired. Cool. Tired. Cool. Cool. I'm tired because of I had the same thoughts as I landed on Friday. I was like, yo, I am over this shit. I was on a flight. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I'm tired of this shit. I'm going to sit here for the next yeah. few hours just breathing my breath. No, I hate it. I hate it. I, I couldn't I, wait to get home. Working with it, like, you know what I mean? Like, being around, like, just no, man. Seeing people in it, no, I hate it. I know Plain. it's necessary. No, over, over. I know we need it. I'm not going to say I'm going to stop wearing my mask out in public. No, but we can voice the fact that we hate it. I, I'm over this shit. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm over what it's doing to my skin. Over that. So what's it doing to your skin? I'm just like, oh, just super moist. Super moisture, oily. You be breathing, baby. Yeah, because I be sweating. I'm training with it on. Oh, shit. You're training with it on? Yeah. You're training with the mask on? Yeah. And you're doing burpees? Doing burpees, doing all kinds of shit. Can't Everything. Burpees in my living room. No <laughs> With no mask. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of the shit. I can I can see why people do the shit they do and feel the way they feel. Now I'm not an idiot. I understand that like me going outside, there's a very good chance I can catch COVID yes, if, I, yes, if, I, yeah, if I'm yeah. not careful. But it's exhausting. And I can understand why people have mask fatigue. <laughs> It's okay to have it. I'm not. I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even defending nothing. I don't care about nothing. I hate it. Yeah. I wear it every day, so I don't care. You understand? I can. I can say it because I hate. I wear it every day. Yeah. Don't go anywhere without it. Can't. Yeah. Can't. I so, mean, where you are, you can. What do you mean? In they Florida, can't. You don't even know what's going on over here right now. What do you mean? They don't. They don't they care if you don't wear a mask even, in Florida. Can't even. Can't even socialize with people. It's been tough. Been tough. <laughs> really? You've been huh. just yearning. Yearning for that socialize, uh, that socialization, like tough man, just tough. Really, man. okay. Bad weather, snowstorms. Wow, wow, yeah, all the snowstorms, all of, it snows every fucking day here now. Yeah, what's that about? Fucking winter wonder every man. day. It's not even a wonderland because it's New York, so all the snow is dirty after. Nah, niggas trying to get those hours. pics off. Yo, know, I being outside of New York and looking at people take pictures. Of like snow on the ground is very beautiful. It is. It's I don't even like the pictures. I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> I don't even like the pictures. I don't. It's, it it's depressing. Beautiful. I had a thought. You're I moving? No, I, I definitely thought about moving to a place that was warm all year round. That Atlanta. At some point in life. No, nah, Atlanta's not warm all year round. Oh, come on down to Fort Lauderdale. Mm, not, not Florida either. What are you thinking? Costa West. Rica? Oh, shit. This yeah. Thing, it's like a blip. With the bug. This thing got hit with the bug. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Out. It was like, when I met you last night, baby. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was my best experience there. Okay. It was the best experience I've ever had there. I got a chance to wear my J's. I got a chance to, because <laughs> I can't wear I can't wear my J's outside right now. It's, uh, it's dirty snow all over the place. You get a chance to wear your J's, wear some flash shit. You can't wear flash shit when it's twenty seven degrees outside. You can, but then you get sick. This nigga said, "I'm like, I can get used to this." <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I felt. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you, bro. I feel you. It ain't no thing. Yeah, it's my best experience there. It's a great place. It wasn't even like super though, hot. Man. Yeah, it is. That's Thanks the thing. Too. That's my thing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. That's like where I'm at with it. The expense. 
Yeah, it's important. My boy's trying to sell me on Dallas every day. Ugh. Oh. Right. Oh. Literally. Can't wait till he hears this. Nick. Mm, no, thank you. Impossible. Every day. I'm like, cuz. Nope. Give it up. I don't want to live in. I mean, Texas is no state tax, but then so is Florida. Gangway. So, you know. Swing those back to my taxes. You're... Yeah, that's going to be sweet. Like, what, in like uh, two years for you? When you file your taxes? It's going to be nice. Indeed. America. All right, bro. That's all I got in the tank for that's today. Good. This was good. We love the women. We want to be number one in your life. For just Kim's life and just Demir's life, not yes, nobody else's life. What's another woman? Who's that? What's greeting her on the other side? What's Nothing. Greener? There's only two women in my life: my mom and Demir. That's it. Mom, Charity, Kimberly, Kimberly, That's Charity, right. whichever. I don't know. <laughs> you nope, in no order. order right? In no order. <laughs> in no order. <laughs> you better get that order right. <laughs> in no order. <laughs> Yo, my order was crazy. Just Your now. order was in nuts. Order. order was nuts. In no order. Indeed. Yo. Oh man. All right, guys, so definitely check the YouTubes. Um, you got to hold on. Before we go, I don't know if you noticed this. On the, the YouTube video that we were talking about Candace Owens on. We got more love. Yo, we got so much more love. Do we? Yo. <laughs> What's the streets say? Jesus yo, Christ. The streets? Yo, racism is a real thing. Are they, are, are, really? Racism is a real thing. And then also... Black people just not knowing shit is a real thing, also. Well, that's the main thing. So, um, let's see. So, one of the comments by Jeremy Barrett was a definition by video of two stupid dudes right there. Get off your ass and work, idiots. I thought I was working. Um, yeah. quit blaming white people for all your problems. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they just copy and paste things that don't make sense. Uh, this one says, these pricks are really dumb. Nothing more to say. Um, and this this black guy with some really questionable dreads says, she's right, guys. Open up your minds for once. Yo, I grew up in Queens my entire life. <laughs> my entire life, right? <laughs> but I found Jesus, so now I'm just chilling. <laughs> Y'all have a good one, right? Y'all be blessed. God bless. Yo, my first thought was crazy. I had a chill. I had a chill. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. I'm working. Yo, yo, the other day, speaking of this, this is how I know I'm working on myself. The Domino's nigga got lost. Came to my crib. Uh -huh. Couldn't find the crib. Left. And then his manager was like, yeah, I told him to come back to the store. And I, I don't even know what. I don't even know what. So then when the Domino's man uh, was pulling back to the crib, mm -hmm. I, I was on my way to the store to find him. And then I seen him <laughs> pull into the store because I'm working on myself. And as I was going, I was like, yo, don't black, don't black, don't black, don't black, don't uh -huh. black, don't black. And I didn't want a black on buddy. I didn't want a black on buddy. Yeah. And then I get to the door and he's like, yo, man, you put the wrong address. And I said, nigga, you got me fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, working on I've myself a, every day, man. I've had, I've had a few spirited conversations with Domino's delivery men when they come here because it's miraculous to me that some of them can find my door and some of them can't. Come and on, some of them I ordered from y'all niggas before. Want me to come outside? And I'm like, order delivery to my door. If I want to come outside, I'd go outside and get my pizza or my food. Yeah, fact, You're going to come to my door. Fact. Niggas got to read the JD. You're going to come to my door. And, and if you're not, then I'm going to call your boss or call your store. I'm going to Karen out, going to Karen the fuck out for customer service. Big Karen. And then if you come out to my place, I'm going to scream on you. Big Karen vibes. Big Karen yeah, I'm, vibes. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working on not doing that anymore. I'll let y'all know how it goes next week. Let's see if I have any escapades this week. But I'm chilling, though. I'm chilling right now. Spray my ankle. I might be big chilling. <laughs> Big chill this week. Streets is lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get much. Are, they, you, uh... are the streets lucky right now in this very moment? The streets <laughs> Yo, lucky. yeah. The streets is fucking lucky. <laughs> what you ass wife? I'm not in the streets. Streets is lucky. You're it. <laughs> and so is these damn YouTube commenters. Oh, uh, these are fucking idiots here. But I love the engagement. Keep engaging. 
it's yeah. cool. That it's all right. For me. Keep engaging. More engagement, more views. That works for me. Yeah, tell oh, your friend to tell man. a friend to come tell a friend. You heard? Absolutely. Big facts. All right, guys. So for Josh, this is Trevor. Make sure you hit the YouTubes. King Speech 5. Make sure, guys, we need you guys to have our back in these comments. Have our back in these comments. Yeah, facts. That's it. That's all we need. Uh, make sure you hit the Instagram at King Speech 5. The Facebook, King Speech Podcast on Facebook, Facebook, Facebook for all your older cousins and aunties and uncles looking for some podcast podcast content. So, do you hope let Trump close out today? <laughs> Looking at the studio like, yo, what's up? <laughs> uh, yes, like, huh? What was he drinking? No, I'm not drinking. Um, Yet. Have a great week, guys. Yo, have a good week, man. Yo, Kings, make up for the bullshit y'all just tried to pull last <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> Listen, like we said, book a trip anywhere. Anywhere, yeah, man, it'll work. Miami, round trip, 150, JetBlue. Holla at me. No, do don't holla at me. I have don't no more buddy passes. Please don't ask him. For I have no <laughs> more buddy. Yo, PSA, I have no more buddy passes. You're all right. Thank no you. No more buddy passes on this side. Love y'all. Peace.